Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, the Jonathan MSP. This is Ukraine War Frontline update for the 17th of April 2024. Um, hopefully you're not getting too annoyed with too much content today. Disappointing you would certainly be getting me down if that was the case. Um, right, that's one for my Ukrainian friends out there. Uh, we'll go to the Frontline update you can see that uh, JR has done a mapping. Uh, because, well, you can't see that. I'm telling you that. Uh, thanks, JR, mate. Really appreciate that. Before we go to the map, actually, I just want to drop into the Jankoy situation. Uh, just to remind people where Jankoy is, it's in Crimea, uh, occupied Crimea, right at this uh, key logistics junction there. The roads and the railway pass through there. It's an air base. You can see that air base there. That was what was hit uh, there were there were fires around there and then five fires around here according to firm's data a lot of damage potentially done to russian equipment certainly evidence of an s300 and s400 i presume taken from this road here pictures of that was seen um a battery that was on the um on the worst side of uh, looking good so that's been hammered at by what could well be ATACMs uh, and so a couple of things I want to say first of all unconfirmed reports says Tim White that I cannot verify uh, state that 30 military were killed in the attack on Jankoy base it said that another 80 were injured helicopters have been flying to the base presumably transporting injured and bodies there's also the claim that they moved helicopters away from there uh, so that you could have had an immediate effect on the behavior of the VKS from here the uh, the Russian air forces now as, as well as there being all this damage, potentially they've lost airframes, uh, munitions and uh, S300, S400 battery or large part thereof. It's also interesting to note that ATACMs are used. Brian Ivey in the, in the threads was, was commenting, mm, interesting that the Americans have said, please don't hit refineries. The, the Ukrainians have just started hitting military bases instead of refineries, it seems. At least they've stopped hitting refineries. And today we're hearing that a base in Mordovia, um, not a base, a uh, there is a two facilities that have been hit one is an aircraft factory, I think in, um, I don't know exactly where, that, and the, the other one is, uh, let's go and find out. So this is what we're just hearing. A radar station has been hit by the GUR, by GUR drones. Uh, that's in Mordovia, uh, Kol, Kovilkino. We'll go and look that up in a second. That is pretty uh, pretty decent for the Ukrainians to have gone, I think, that 600 kilometers to hit that. Uh, radar can monitor the airspace of up to 100 kilometers altitude and has a 3,000 kilometer range. So that's good news. And then apparently a uh, a an air um, aircraft factory in Tatarstan was hit. Uh, I, I could show you the pictures, but you get the, you get the uh, you get the picture. This is Tatarstan there, so that's a fair distance uh, from the Ukrainian border. And let's look up Mordovia and see where that is. And we can see that, yeah, okay, that's the the to the west of Tatarstan. So again, decent distance from the Ukrainian border. Now, if the Ukrainians are, are not hitting refineries and starting to hit uh, military installations again, and they have hit this Jankoy base with ATAC and ballistic missiles, if that is a the case, then as Brian Ivey says, mm, is that an interesting coincidence? Could it be that the US says, right, don't hit those re refineries, here are some missiles to hit something else, uh, if you can stay away from the refineries? That's massive speculation. Don't know if it's happened, but it is certainly worth considering. I don't see it as too much of a problem. I think it's two sides of the square. You either hit them in the in a pocket so they can't afford to prosecute the war, or you hit them in the the industry and equipment side of things where they can't. It's not they can't afford to; it's they can't prosecute the war. So you know, one or the other. Uh, okay, now let's actually get to the front line. You can see there are no changes to the northeastern sector again. That is really good news for the Ukrainians. Uh, really successfully keeping the Russians at bay there. All the Russians have just run out the ability, um, the momentum, the resources to be able to commit to the front line in too many places. Sversk quietened down. No news from Bilohor. 
Marivka. We have the Bakhmut area, Chesiv Yar. No news there uh, in terms of any movements of the front line. In indeed, the Institute for the Study of War American Military Think Tank doesn't really give anything that I've noted until we get to Avdivka. Surat Maps does say here that... Oh no, this is that's in the wrong place. So well, that's Ocheretnyi. Uh, so we're going to come to that in a second. So let's now go down to Avdivka, where we can see there's a blue uh, pin there. That's a, that's a bit of a rarity. Uh, Deep State Maps has a bit of catching up with what um, Surat Maps claimed yesterday in this move along the railway line towards Ocheretnyi, and that's actually what we have here. Uh, situation north of Avdivka, Russian army advance beyond Zarya Dachas along the railway, reaching the train station, uh, 1110KV, adjacent to the trench system and the first houses of the town of Ocheretnye. Now, we uh, that's already been... Oh, that is marked there. So those two agreeing that the Russians have got that far, really on the outskirts of the settlement there. And that's a bit of a worry because the Russians have actually pretty much taken uh some of the largest amount of land we've seen for some time uh three kilometers worth plus if you if you include coming back down here so maybe three to f three to five kilometers worth of um of distance in fairly short order in this northeastern area of the Avdivka front line and that is a bit of a worry um if we have if we look at what surat map says coming a bit further south to around badici interesting that we have some blue uh, pins and some blue polygons on their map. Uh, so the situation there is reports have emerged. The Ukrainian army has regained positions in Berdichi. These reports are strange as no confirmation was ever received that Russian troops had taken the western part of the town. In fact, there was only confirmation of advances in the first houses of the west bank of the Derna River. During the last few hours, the Ukrainian troops have indeed regained positions, but these are close to the northern reservoir. Still, as mentioned above, the seizure of the last supply line will prevent Ukrainian soldiers from holding the last positions there. I love all of that. Look at all that stuff to say, oh yeah, I suppose the Ukraine needs to have taken a tiny bit of land. You know, rather than... Yeah, it's, it's interesting that the rhetoric between when the Russians take land and when the Ukrainians take land. Okay, according to the Institute for the Study of War, geolocated footage published on April the 10th. So it's going back some time. And then later, geolocated on April the 15th, shows Ukrainian forces operating in central Pervomysky. I reported this the other day. And geolocated footage published on the 15th also indicates that Ukrainian forces retook some grounds north of Badici. And that is where we are talking about just there. Uh, so that is... Uh, Interesting stuff. We'll go and look at the geolocation for those. So we'll go to Bedici before we go down to Pervomysky. So Bedici up here, Pervomysky down there. Uh, Bedici, as you can see, the blue pin from Surat Maps suggests that there's some activity near this uh, lake area there. Uh, it's a smaller part of the lake just there. It depends what it looks like this time of year, of course. When we go to the Institute for the Study of Wars Geolocations, the 74th Brigade, a company of drones and a pilot are working at the end. There are shots of objective control, the village of Bedici, northwest of Avdivka. So you've got some water there in that video. And then when we come on to uh, the second telegram, we have Avdivka, Bedici, positional combat operations on the northern flank of Avdivka, shelling of the position of the armed forces of Ukraine. Uh, on the northern outskirts of Bedici by an FPV drone of the Russian armed forces. So in other words, the Russians are hitting Ukrainians who are in this position. We'll go and plug that into the map. So remember, this is where Ukrainians have been found to be. And yeah, exactly where that pin is. So that means that... I mean, it's not necessarily Ukrainian control. You wouldn't put that down as Ukrainian control. Although if that was Russians, Surat Map will put that down as Russian control. But it's Ukrainians, you'd see that as grey zone uh, where there is dynamic uh, activity there. Uh, but just an interesting, interesting that that becomes uh, grey zone and the Russian control is pushed back there. But if that's Russian, Russians, 
one i bet my mortgage throughout maps and put that under russian control uh anyway i digress now let's look at the geolocations that rsw talk about with regard to what's going on in pervomysky first of all let's pop in to see what the what Surat Maps says of uh, Pervomysky. So, situation northwest of Donetsk City following the capture of Pervomysky, uh, Russian army began advancing south of the locality in order to take the Ukrainian salient. So far, the main trenches have been taken without difficulty, which ind indicates Ukrainian army may retreat from this area, may have retreated some days ago. However, combing operations will take some time due to the high presence of mines and trenches. In addition, Russian forces began advancing towards Netalyove, reaching the eastern outskirts of the locality. So, this general doesn't uh, lead us to think that the Ukrainians would still be in the center of uh, Pervomysky as is indicated by the geolocation here. So Ukrainian Humvee attacks a Russian position in Pervomysky. Uh, location is here so let's plug that in uh, and then the next one is the Ukrainian infantry waving a flag at the Pervomysky school and we'll look at exactly where that is. Uh, whether they are still there the Ukrainians and uh, pushing in and harrying the Russians, I don't know, because that is all the way back here, right? Uh, and so this has certainly happened in the last within the last week, one presumes. We have so that's a Humvee operating there, and in order for a Humvee to operate there, I'd imagine you know it's going to be fairly difficult if the Russians have all this territory. But I, this could have been some time ago that the Ukrainians were filmed it here. Uh, nonetheless, yep, and flag raised over there. So we'll take both kind of ideas with a pinch of salt. Not that the Ukrainians were there, but the idea that they're still there and the idea that the Russians have taken vast amounts of ground to the south and to the west of there as well. Nonetheless, you know, I'd imagine the Russians will want to fill in this gap between Novelska. I don't think they have Novelska. And indeed, Andrew Perpetua, as I've said previously, uh, had evidence to suggest that this was complete bunkum. And that's why neither of the other mappers have that under Russian control. Uh, so it might not be filling in a gap, but actually moving down towards Novelsky to maybe help take it from the north. Uh, so anyway, that's what's going on in Pervomysky. We're now going to come down uh, further to the south, past Novelsky, uh, and towards Krasnoharivka, where you can see that, that Andrew Perpetua and Surat Maps agree that the the Russians have made some really big gains uh, fighting in now the southern, fully on in the southern outskirts of uh, Krasna Harivka here, which is a little bit of a worry. The, the Ukrainians did a really good job to keep the Russians at bay here. And then suddenly it seems that the Russians have ma been able to make gains. So yesterday, this is what Surat Map says, situation west of Donetsk City in Krasna Harivka. Recent video footage shows the Russian army entering into the new area south of Krasna Harivka. The new assault reached the previous taken positions and landed new troops in the elevator close to the train station. So that's probably a grain elevator. Uh, regarding that the main combats are taking place along the railway towards the industrial sector, it's very possible that the Ukrainian army retreated from the southern streets. However, as we said previously the battle for the town has just started so here we have um where it initially the the russians initially got in there they now have control over all that area as according to the latest mapping uh, this is the video it's probably going to be loud music put fingers in your ears no brilliant uh, this is a quiet one Yay! Uh, so anyway that's that's the the battle that's taking place in the south of krasnoharivka uh, moving on up into the town area there, as you can see. Then I, I don't play, I'd, I'd love to play you that, but I can't. Uh, then we have uh, the situation now. So situation in the same place, new video footage is emerged showing the famous barn tank advancing. So that's that turtle tank I showed you, advancing without resistance through Krasnoharivka and into the industrial sector. It's too early to say that the territory has passed under into Russian control. That's very um, conservative of you, Syriac. Uh, but there are indications that the Ukrainian army has retreated towards a refractory plant. Combing operations have begun in the southern streets and around the railway station so that in the next few days, the Russian army could be be in control of at least 15% of the city. Uh, let's see now the uh, situation here with, yeah, so that's that turtle tank moving without too much, um, you know, th there's the odd uh, uh, cluster munition going off, but moving generally without being halted into the southern confines of the town. 
Uh, and that's where you'd want... I mean, it's difficult when you've got a moving target to hit it plumb on with artillery. Uh, so that's why you go for that those cluster munitions. But that could be a useful protection for cluster munitions. Interesting. That one, is that got that's the one with the mine roller as well. So it's not only got um, a turret, but a mine roller and, and a turtle. It's got a bit of everything, that one. Anyway, that's the situation uh, in the set to the south of Krasnarevka. We'll see. Oh, I knew that I'd have to refresh that. That's uh, annoying. Bear with me two ticks. So there we have it, south of Krasnohrivka, where we have the that tank going into, looks like into, into this area initially, and then, or it could have been driving along here, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but get, getting into that general area, and the Ukrainians pulling back uh, towards uh, the industrial zone here uh, is, is the claim. Um, so that's, uh, that's Krasnohrivka uh, before we move on further to the south actually is this the, no this is the latest one from krasnohorivka from Suryat maps uh just talking about the different streets that the russians are on in addition troops captured the abandoned auto repair plant uh as it says between 10 and 15 percent under russian control now uh so yeah there we go that that is worrying uh it seems that the nova Mikhailivka, the Russians have ground to a bit of a halt there. This was the area that they were having most success and they had been uh, repelled around Krasnohorivka quite successfully. But now as they come to a halt in Nova Mikhailivka, it's Krasnohorivka where they're having this success. So it seems to be like passing the baton from one of these places to the other. Uh, and then we come to the southern front line where you can see no changes to Velika Novosilka and uh, a little pin there on the... Um, on the Robotina axe uh, vector uh, salient. So just to let you know, there's not an awful lot else in the Institute for the Study of War with regard to um, to these other places. It's just worth mentioning that the DNR People's Republic claimed that Russia, the Russians used six attack helicopters to support Russian infantry ground assault on Krasnohrivka, firing 240 missiles at the Ukrainian forces. We have heard that well, some people have been saying, well, I don't see much footage of uh, Russians using helicopters. I presume they're not using them much. They are still using them. You can find the footage if you really want it. Uh, it appears there, though, that those are probably unguided missiles that used a bit like the sort of BM-21 grads or similar uh, that they get fired. You, you, know, you see the helicopters rise up, fire them off, and then they basically take out a whole area, a bit like a barrage bombardment of artillery. It, I don't know that it's hugely um, precise, uh, but it it does it does work to. I mean, imagine being under a barrage of those missiles in a tree line or somewhere. It must be pretty horrific, psychologically pretty horrific. There, um, here we can see that the Russians have made some gains into Robotna, as according to Suret maps. So that is uh, potentially a, a challenge for the Ukrainians, but. Yet again, no agreement here between the mappers and Andrew Perpetua particularly disagreeing with where the Russians are around Robotina. And this is more likely a grey zone than under robust Russian control. Um, here we have Surat maps uh, describing what's happened here. Um, situation in the Robotina areas that the Russian army made new advances inside Robotina. Uh, about half of the locality is now taken by Russian troops. There's been talk that the Russians will soon close the salient. Uh, this will depend on the Vobovi axis, which will cut off supply routes to Robotina. It's not an easy operation, as the fighting is taking place along the road situated in the lower area. Without taking the surrounding hills, the Ukrainian army can easily defend the area by taking advantage of the elastic defence in the wide fields of this front. Uh, a bit of sort of word salad. There is some high ground, elastic defense, sort of pushing, pulling here and there, dynamically active defense, uh, rather than just sitting in trenches, uh, not really moving troops anywhere and just getting walked over in some areas or maybe stand, standing strong in other, uh, whatever. Elastic defense is what's being claimed to be used in the robot and axis by the Ukrainians there. Then when we come out, we can see no changes to the mapping around Krinky, but we did hear yesterday that there were rumours that the Russians 
had pushed further into the center of this gray zone. Remember, that's not Ukrainian control. That is gray zone. You understand my maps. They are the these all lines, all of these lines denote Russian control. Everything the other side of those lines will be gray zone until you get to a point that's, uh, you know, confidently and robustly Ukrainian controlled. So the Ukrainian control will be in the River Delta area and they will not really control any of this uh, region here, but they have supposedly pushed the gray zone further back here. Uh, so while they've kind of lost some area, they've, they, they've almost shifted this area further to the Southwest. Um, and that's what the ISW talks about a little bit. So we come to the, again to the Institute for the Study of War. We'll read out the Krinky section. Positional engagements continued there. Yesterday, a Russian mill blogger claimed on April the 15th that Ukrainian forces expanded their bridgehead in Krinky westward to a width of 500 metres with an unspecified Russian unit surrendering its positions. The mill blogger claimed that Russian forces also advanced in central Krinky up to 400 metres wide and 100 metres deep. ISW has not observed visual confirmation of those claims. Uh, Ukrainian Southern Operational Command spokesperson Human Yuk, who's herself in a little bit of trouble, people in the Ukrainian press blaming her for not allowing kind of free press access or, or so on and so forth. The calls for her to be um, to be fired by the Ukrainian press. Uh, nonetheless, she has stated that the Russian aircraft increasingly launch missile strikes on Kherson Oblast from the Black Sea and Sea of Azov, but fly closer to the front line to conduct guided glide bomb strikes once a week. Hermenyuk and the Ukrainian Kherson Oblast administration, Prokudin, reported that Russian forces conducted a glide bomb strike on Bereslav uh, recently. Well, they do it in a number of places. Bereslav just up here um, on the way to the north east, uh, just by Kokovka. Where are you, Bereslav? Um, I will find you uh, here somewhere. Anyway, uh, you get the point. Bereslav around here. There you are, Bereslav, by the Kokovka Dam. Uh, so that is routinely struck by guided glide bombs and the claim that they are flying from the Black Sea and Sea of Azov here uh, and hitting the Kherson Oblast routinely is is a real challenge for the Ukrainians. They need that air defence, those long-range air defence systems close to the front line in a number of places to try and deal with the Russian VKS that is still active. But of course, hitting places like Jankoy is going to help. Getting missiles and throwing them back at these air bases. The the uh, the claims concerning the R three six three sixty Neptune missile that it can uh, reach a thousand kilometers. And they are increasing the the uh, manufacturing capacity tenfold of those missiles means that potentially you could see these fly against air bases in occupied territory, and that would help to push back these these planes, or and even use them against air bases outside of occupied territory. What the Ukrainians absolutely need to do is stop these planes dropping guided glide bombs all around Ukraine. They're making such a making it hell for people on the northern border as well as on the front lines. And they just need to take out all of these air bases. But of course, that's easier said than done. The Russians have an awful lot of air bases around, but they certainly need to to hit the Russians where it hurts in terms of the VKS. Those air, air bases have got to be, in my opinion, priority target number one. Or oh, target, yeah, anyway, you get the point. Words are difficult for me today. Anyway, thank you guys. Take care. Speak to you soon. Toodle pips.